and the way they think GFF is operating in the Gambia. The movement is a peaceful movement, not political, not interest-based, not supported by any faction or fraction. We believe, as youths of this country, we are entitled to our opinions regarding how the various ministries operate as far as youth participation is concerned. The Gambia Football Federation has been seen as a body that has lack confidence of the people and as youths, particularly as concerned youths, we believe coming together as one to stage a movement to make sure that the relevant stakeholders, including the central government, the Ministry of Youth and Sport, the Gambia Football Federation, and all other organizations, including FIFA and CAF, are concerned. Our concerns are very important because it represents the ordinary Gambian youth who wish to play football, watch football, enjoy from football, or gain from football. The Gambia Football Federation is the highest organization of football in this country. And therefore, we believe coming together as one to hear out our views is not a big problem to the country. We believe the government should support our endeavors to make sure that we institute individuals who will fight for the general well-being of these youths. Gambian football has, a, pro, has a, a destiny to fulfill because if you look into the past two years, two, two editions of CAF, we have been lucky to qualify. But recently, if you are a keen follower of the AFCON 2023, our Gambian football team and Gambian football supporters, lovers across the country and abroad, have been facing difficulties, including lack of payments of funds, uh, poor transportation system and uh, uh, improper logistics, which at some point threaten the life of our beloved footballers. We believe football in this country has a place to go if and only if we reinstitute people who are committed, dedicated and has the desire to serve selflessly, not for their own personal self-aggrandizement, not for patronage, not for wealth, but for the interests of the ordinary Gambians. Here and now, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be within this country or abroad, we the Gambia, Gambia Football Federation must go movement. Believe that we are not aligned to any political party, we are not aligned to any individual organization, we are a political and we have the fervent belief that we have right to organize a press conference in order to hear out our views and opinions, our intentions and purposes to make sure that we are heard all over this country. Therefore, without most wasting, wasting much time, I believe the media here present, ladies and gentlemen present, we should get you through to the main agenda why we are here. Key of the reason for this petition include, number one, allegations of corruption and financial mismanagement within the organization. Number two, lack of transparency and accountability within the GFF management and decision-making processes. Number three, inadequate support and development opportunities for grassroots football. Number four, failure to address the concerns and needs of players, coaches, referees, and other stakeholders in the football community. Number five, last but not the least, lack of diversity and inclusivity in the GFF's leadership and representatives uh, and representation, which have cast a dark shadow over the integrity of Gambian football. Gambian footballers, football fans, football lovers, and all other people who are concerned about the future of Gambia as far as football is concerned. These are some of the reasons why this press conference is called and if you are a keen follower you are highly welcome to this press conference but before we go further we would like to give the floor to the second uh, to the chairman of the Gambia Football Federation must go movement who is no other person but Mr. Ali Salah. Mr. Ali Salah you are highly welcome thank you very much yep. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum. As the chairman of this uh, of, of this movement, I would like to welcome each and everybody here. And uh, the main purpose of the main the main of this movement uh, is to bring transparency and accountability to the GFF. And we seek we we urge the relevant authorities to consider the evidence presented and initiate a thorough investigation into the GFF's organization. As outlined in the preceding section, we believe such an investigation is crucial to ensure transparency and accountability in the management of funds allocated to the Gambian football development. We are particularly grateful to the executives who have cons consistently advocated for transparency and responsible use of resources within the Gambian football ecosystem. The dedication inspired hope for a brighter future for the Gambian football. 
we, the movement of GFF must go, remain committed to working collaboratively with relevant stakeholders to achieve sustainable development and growth for Gambian football at all levels. Thank you all for coming and we will really appreciate this movement or this information or this data that we are giving to be shared worldwide. Our voice needs to be heard in any way. I thank you all for your kind attention. And gentlemen, that was the introductory remark from the press, uh, the chairperson of the GFF Moscow movement, uh, that is Mr. Ali Salah, a very dedicated youth, a youth that has a fervent desire to make sure that GFF restores sanity in our Gambian football. Accountability and transparency must not be compromised as far as his statements are concerned. On that note, fellow Gambians, Gambian youths, football lovers, footballers, referees and coaches, we hereby begin the petition which will be pronounced by the IPRO, that is the Information and Public Relations Officer of the GFF Moscow Movement, who is no other person but Mr. Babukar Kurubali. However, ladies and gentlemen, before we give the floor to IPRO Mr. Babukar Kurubali, we would like to recommend the efforts of no other person but Mr. Ibrahim Ajallo, whom we must all give a round of applause. Mr. Ibrahim Ajallo, also known as the Ghetto Pen, is part of the key members of this movement. He serves as the Secretary General of this movement, and he has influenced a lot of people to believe in the movement. He has endowed a lot of time, energy, and resources to make sure that a day like this happens in the Gambia. For the records, this may be for the first time that we have a press conference challenging a particular ministry or a federation regarding corruption, mismanagement and embezzlement of public funds. On that note, I once again retreat my sincere appreciation to the contribution of Mr. Ibrahim Ajallo, also known as the Ghetto Pen. I wish him the best of luck and we give him a round of applause one more and public relations officer we will read the provisions of the petition that we want to say to the general membership of the Gambia Football Federation, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, the Government of the Gambia, the Gambian Youth, the Federation of International Football Association, the Confederation of African Football and all other stakeholders in the promotion of Gambian football from the grassroots level to our national team. On that note, Mr. Bouakar Kurubali, welcome on board. We well, give him a round of applause. Welcome, Mr. Bouakar Kurubali. Thank you very much. A very warm welcome to our friends who are the media, and a very warm welcome to everybody that took time to be at this landmark, I mean, press conference that we stayed today. Today is a humble day in Gambian football and today is one of the days that will linger in our minds and that will be in the good books of the Gambian, I mean, archives. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Serekunda East where the Gambia Football Federation with a press and with pressure have been fight to the nail to make sure that sanity is in our football. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our firm belief that these actions are detrimental to the development and growth of our national sports. As a concerned citizens and members of the JFF Moscow Group, we are deeply troubled by the reports of gross mismanagement and embezzlement of funds that were intended for the development of football in the Gambia. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of this of our crusade is to raise awareness among the public and relevant authorities about the need for immediate action to address the above mentioned issues within the GFF. By organizing events, protests and public discussions, we aim to set light on the misconduct and demand accountability from those responsibility. It has come to our attention that the GFF has received significant investments from FIFA and CAF totaling to 11 million US dollars from 2014 to 2024 for infrastructural development and administrative costs. However, despite these substantial funds, there is lack of accountability and transparency in the utilization of these resources. The GFF Moscow Group has identified several projects 
including constructions and upgrading of football fields that have been reported to FIFA but have not been completed, as the GFF promised. The GFF reported to FIFA that the construction of 14 football pitches across the country, some of which were intended to have artificial turf and natural glass, has been completed. However, upon several inspections, it is evident that many of these projects were not completed as promised. Number one is the Jara Soma project update. The Jara Soma project update, for instance, stands as a start reminder of neglect and unfulfilled promises since 2015. This absence of proper facilities, such as seating benches, dressing rooms, and pavilions reflects a lack of commitment to the rural football development. Ladies and gentlemen, the Gunjul project update, similarly, the Gunjul project initiated in 2018, remains unfinished and unusable, causing frustration among the youth and football enthusiasts in the region. The Bakau project update, the Bakau project update, similar to other GFF projects, involved the construction of a perimeter fence, pavilion with dressing rooms, and a grass pitch at the Bakau Mini Stadium. The project began, began in 2019 with a planned duration of one year. The perimeter fence has been completed, but the pavilion is only built to a dressing room style and is yet to be finished. The upgrade of the football grass pitch was carried out by the Bakau community living in the diaspora. Currently, the football field lacks proper water supply to maintain the grass naturally, and there is often shortage of electricity to operate the borehole consistently for suitable water supply. Ladies and gentlemen, the Banjul project update. The Banjul field project was envisioned to in include a perimeter fence, dressing room, an artificial grass pitch, and a floodlight for night football matches. However, the project progress has fallen short of expectations. As of now, only the perimeter fence has been completed to a satisfactory standard. Unfortunately, the floodlights installed in 2020 have remained non-operational due to the postage of substandard products by the Gambia Football Federation. Moreover, the artificial turf has faced challenges, having been replaced twice already, the current installation, completed in 2022, is currently deemed unplayable. Ladies and gentlemen, the Serekunda West project update, the Serekunda West project funded by FIFA is deemed one of the worst projects ever undertaken by the GFF. The mini stadium renovation in Serekunda West was halted with only floor lights being installed. The project neglected essential components such as pavilions, dressing rooms and the grass pitch. The float lights installed are industrial lights and not suitable for football, rendering them unusable. Serekunda East project, where we are today. The Serekunda East project aimed to upgrade the football park with float lights, a perimeter fence, dressing rooms and a grass pitch. The Serekunda East Sports Committee independently funded the project through Navidan ticket sales and sponsors. However, the only project undertaken by the GFF at